Hey, Lindsay, you know what? You must visit me in New York City someday <clears throat> soon. I mean, I really, I don't know when the last time I saw you was. When is the last time you were in New York? You really must. Last come time I was in New me. York, it's been, it's probably been at least a few years. I don't think I've been in New York since before the pandemic, before the health oh, crisis, wow. Michelle. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, I just found out a friend of mine is moving back there from Boston. He oh. just got a job. And so I have many people to visit you and also my friend and a few others. So yes. yes. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I look forward to that. Lindsay, today we are going to answer a listener's question. It's is a grammar episode, guys. So this was from YouTube, right, Lindsay? Uh, YouTube, guys, check it out. Today's episode also is on YouTube. Yes. You can go over there and just type in all ears English. You will find our, you know, our channel, just hit subscribe on that channel. If you learn better in a visual way, right, Michelle, because some people do actually learn visually. Oh, absolutely. I think it helped. The visual learning is good for me. Um, I, yeah. I always like to see something like written out. I can't, you know, sure. so yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. So anyway, well, we are going to answer this listener's question today. Lindsay, would you like to read it for us? Here we go. So this listener says, hi, I'm Zara from Turkey, and I'm so thankful to you because I've been feeling my English getting better since mm -hmm. I started listening to your podcast. That's fantastic, Michelle. Don't you love that? I love that. Thank you. I love it. And and she says, it's so much fun, and I really love your energy. Aw, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I have one request. Can you talk about must, should, may, and shall? I'm always confused while using them. Michelle, this is a fantastic question. I'm excited. Yes, exactly. Okay. So this is, yeah, this is a great question. Very specific. I love it. So guys, this is about modal. So in the dictionary defines that as something that expresses uh, necessary, something that's necessary or a possibility. So yeah. um, okay. must, should, may, and shall are these types of verbs. Um, yes. So let's let's go through the list. But, be, but first, we just want to direct you guys, if you like these grammar episodes, uh, we have All Ears English episode 1937, which was didn't versus wouldn't a listener's English grammar question answered. So yes. go ahead and listen to that one. We have tons of grammar episodes, guys. Yes, absolutely. Guys, go check out our grammar episodes. Our approach to English is always connection, not perfection. But sometimes you do need to learn the grammar and you should obviously try to say Good. things correctly. <laughs> and we show you how to get it right, but also connect at the same time. So go and check that check out that episode. Absolutely. All right. So let's start with must. So that's what I said. I said, you must visit me must. in New York City someday. I mean, yeah. how did that sound to you? Right. So I think it's interesting how you, it sounded in positive, encouraging, and very, um, I wouldn't say pushy because pushy has kind of a negative connotation, right? Mm -hmm. It sounded, um, you're insisting. It's like, you want to host me, right? Right. Right. And I, yeah, I think a lot of our listeners might be surprised to see must used in this way, because I feel like many of them might be used to, you must do this, you must do that in a negative way, right. giving orders. But this is different. This is an invitation. Right. right, exactly. I'm enthusiastic. I mean, so must, I mean, it's basically a, it doesn't always have to be like you said, oh, you must right. do this, you must do this, blah, blah, blah. Right. It's a very <laughs> strong suggestion is the idea. Right. right. So like right. I'm giving you a very strong suggestion that I want you to come visit me. And that's how I'm saying it. I mean, but it can also mean saying you have to do that something. You, you can. must you must yeah. sweep the floor by six, you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't use I don't use it very much in that way because it feels formal to me, right. right? Giving orders. I would be more likely to use it in the way you just did, kind of a very insisting uh, invitation, right? Right. So like for this one, so for this example, that's that's perfect for that. So you must see that movie. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. So this is very strong, very emphatic. You're essentially trying to tell me this is a great movie. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. But what's another example with must? Okay. So you must bring your key because I won't be home to unlock the door later. So maybe this is like a formal set of instructions. Maybe you are just moving in and you're, you meet, you're meeting your super, your superintendent of your building in New York for the first time, something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. More right. formal. Right. So yeah. yeah, it could be that person's giving you uh, directions or like, let's say you have a house guest right oh, yeah. um, where you mm -hmm. give them the key and you're just saying like you're basically you, you could have also just said 
don't forget the key because I won't be able to unlock it for you later, you know? So yeah, you must, I mean, it's different than, I mean, soon we're going to move on to should, but, yeah. um, you know, it's, it just, it's highlighting that this is important. Yeah. And I think, I think native speakers don't use it that, that much, Michelle, yeah. would you agree with that in that way? Yes, right in the I orders it feels a little bit unnatural to me for some reason maybe we've just become a more casual society or something you know mm -hmm. but it just doesn't quite feel natural to me but it, it is what it means right a strong suggestion okay exactly. or giving kind of orders yes yeah. well so let's move on to should i mean that uh, I think people use all the time. Um, yes. So I wonder what that says, if that says something about like our culture and like the level of directness mm. we use. That's interesting. Um, yeah. So, mm. I mean, what is should? Okay. So should, it, I guess we're kind of going down, like becoming a little less strong, right? So it's not as strong as must, but it's still a suggestion or it, giving advice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for example, you should call me if you're in the area. Right. right, right. So that's more advice. It's not that strong. It's just a suggestion. Or yeah, um, I should get that dent in my car fixed soon. Yeah, this is all over the place. Should, 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 should. I say it all day. Okay, all day, all day. <laughs> yeah. Well, so but what if I said if, if I say um like with that key example, you must bring your key because I won't be home to unlock the door later. If I said you should bring your key, does that have any different feel to it? Like that feels more natural to say, but. <laughs> Yeah. It, it, to me, it feels a lot more common. You're much mm -hmm. more likely to hear a native speaker say that. Um, I, I think maybe it is a little less dire, right? Yeah. Like you must bring your key versus you, right. should, you right. should bring your key, right? But I think most native speakers, even if it's a dire suggestion, like you're going to get locked out of the house. This is serious. It's winter. They're still going to say mm -hmm. you should, not you must. It just mm -hmm. doesn't quite fit the culture anymore or something must, I mean. Right. And here in that sentence, then you have the second part, like, you, you know, you should bring your key because I won't be home to unlock the door later. So in that you're giving the second piece of the story. So even if yeah. you use should, you know, it's, it's more natural sounding, but also you're explaining why. So the person should pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a lot, <laughs> there's been a lot of, um, stuff written in pop culture about using should in your internal dialogue, right? Mm. Like things that you're kind of scolding yourself. Like I should be this, I should be that. There's an article <laughs> that I'm pulling up right now from psychology today. And it says, stop shooting all over yourself. No, stop <gasps> shooting yourself to death. <laughs> That's so funny. Very creative title. <laughs> so there is a lot that, I mean, we could really, uh, you know, have a whole other episode about that, our internal dialogues. And are we saying should too much? Why, you know, putting too much pressure on ourselves. Could you send that article to me? That sounds that sounds interesting. Sure. Maybe yeah. you can email that to me later and we'll take a deeper <laughs> dive in another day. Right, right. Exactly. So it's talking about how can we just be present with what is in our lives now mm -hmm. instead of saying this whole list of what we think the ideal person does, right? Volunteering, meditating. I should meditate. I should give back. I should do. Well, maybe you just don't have the mental space for it right now. And right. that's okay. Right. 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 I mean, can this ever be used in an annoying way where it's like, I mean, I think we've talked about unsolicited advice before on the show. Oh, sure, um, sure. So sure. yeah, it can be used like, you know, I think it's common, you know, that somebody might have like their parent or whatever, mm -hmm. like, especially like adults, like, I don't know if, uh, you know, mm -hmm, your, your mm -hmm, parent mm -hmm. might say, oh, you should you yeah. know, like you should make sure your kids, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. My parents aren't really like that as much, but no. a lot of parents are for sure. Yeah. yeah. Are your parents like that? I don't picture that for your parents. No, much. no, they're not. Um, uh, sometimes my mom comments on my <laughs> cleanliness of my home. <laughs> no, that's why you always make your bed before she comes to visit, right? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. You know, I think our listeners, uh, knew that my our listeners know one that. episode. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, but other than that, no, my parents aren't really like that. But I know that sometimes like people say their parents like really comment on how they raise their children and, you know, things like that. So they might say like, oh, you should do this or, you know, so even yeah. though it's almost it can almost be used as a way to mask a must. Does right, that make sense? Right, right. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right. So 
it seems not as strong, but it is actually strong coming from that person. Yeah, that's if you're tough, doing right? it. When all yeah, people, if you're like prodding yeah. at someone, you should like, oh, you should send your kids to, you know, I, the, yeah, I don't know. You should do this. You should do that. Or it also makes me think of um, backseat drivers right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, uh -huh. you should take this route. You should go up 12th Avenue because there's a traffic jam every Thursday at three on 11th, yeah. right? Stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> in the <laughs> back seat. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So very interesting. So let's go to May. So May is basically that something is possible, but also about permission to do something. Mm -hmm. So let's just, let's yeah. just talk about that and give some examples. So I may call her after the game, um now, and is, guys is, is, sorry uh -huh. go ahead no go ahead michelle go ahead yeah i was gonna say we have an episode about um may maybe and maybe um so that's episode 1857 i think you did this with aubrey that was this may be <laughs> the best grammar episode ever right not maybe but may be so check out that episode guys that's a fun one so michelle in this example i may call her after the game is this the version of May where you're um, you know, giving permission or is no. this the version of May where you're saying might? This is the version of May where you're saying might. <laughs> <laughs> it's confusing. It's a lot, there's guys. I know might. these are these are tough. Um, so and then there's what about this one? Do you remember this one from school, Lindsay? Like, may I oh, use sure. the restroom? I feel like this is like with little kids. A lot of parents do this. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of parents will teach their kid to say may instead of can. And I think that's because may is a little bit more polite. Right. Or historically, I guess I, I have a feeling this happened more in the past than now, to be honest, Michelle, oh, you could tell me, I mean, what are you teaching your kid? Are you teaching your kid may like, may I have another carrot or, uh, can I have another, let's say chocolate instead of carrots. <laughs> so, so this, um, it's really funny that this comes up today, actually, um, as I planned this a little while ago, but just yesterday I was, um, over at a friend's house, one of my sons, my friend's best friend from school. And her son was asking for more snack. And he said, like, you know, are both of our, you know, you have to, um, it's hard. I always have to remind my son over and over. He'll, cause he'll just say something. To, he'll just be like, string cheese. And, <laughs> And I was just not a like, good habit. I, I'm like, we're not. No, I'm like, I, I'll just say to him, like, can you try that again? And or sometimes he'll just say, like, a string cheese, please. And I'm like, no, I'm like, uh, you know, uh, you know, this would be an interesting episode, actually, because I'll teach him like I would rather I would rather him say, can you get me some string cheese and not uh -huh. say please than just say string cheese, please. Right. Well, it's more advanced in terms of language for sure. That's true. And it's also just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, I feel like, so, so then I told him, I told him, you don't have to say please every time to me, to me. I said, <laughs> but as long as you say it as a question. So now sometimes he'll go, he'll say string cheese and I'll say, okay, can you ask me? And he'll say, I don't have to say please every time. <laughs> That's so cute. That's but so cute. Anyway, sorry. Um, my, but I was with my friend and she said her son was also like, just shouted out what he wanted. And she was like, ask me. And she said, may I blah, blah, blah. And I remember I thought to myself just yesterday, like, wow, may I, that's not, like, I teach him. Can yeah. I? Yeah. But the, re the reason it, it's different is because may I is technically, I think more correct because uh -huh. It's, uh, um, am I allowed to asking for permission? Whereas right. can is like, can I, am I able to like, can, do I have the ability to this? So to do this, okay. so like, I remember they always said, like, if you say, may I, can I use the restroom and say, oh. I don't know. Can you? Oh, that's right. Okay. Yes. That was always a thing that people would say growing up. People would say, I don't know. Can you use the restroom? Right. So when you break down the technical definitions of yeah. these may of may and can, it gets a little bit tricky, but I think technically we don't really in in the way native speak as yeah. adults we don't really we don't mind i think may is something that parents might teach their kids to be polite but by the time that kid your friend's kid is 25 he's probably not going to say may i may i have a grilled cheese or may right. i have the steak right it's something that like just kids kind of say because their parents want right. them to be like uber polite i think right and i i don't know i just that maybe maybe i'm not a good parent no i like yeah, but okay. i mean i think that she it's, i mean it's not that there's anything wrong either way it's just to me it sounds more natural to say can totally even, that's what you know, i would be right? teaching i would be teaching can 
right. to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. But it's interesting because so do you feel like adults do use may then? I mean, in other situations to ask to do something? Oh, um, I don't think so. Like may I yeah. just, I don't think so. Do you like not as much? I really think it's something that kids might do when their parents are like, okay, go ahead and order your dinner at the restaurant, yeah. right? Or something like that, or giving right. permission. Like you you may you may do this, you may do that. Um, I'm trying to think because a couple weekends ago we went to Steamboat to go skiing in Colorado mm -hmm. and we rented an Airbnb. And this particular Airbnb was like we were staying in the person's house. We had like the basement room and I'm trying to think of what words she used to explain what we could do and couldn't do. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, she, I don't think she said may very much. Like there's all this milk in the fridge that we could use. And she didn't say you may use this. She's like, you can use this milk yeah. if you want to yeah. use this milk. Yeah. I think, I think it's just how things have changed. And I think, you know, I, I mean, changed, yeah. I, I just think can is fine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, Michelle. Go oh, that's what I would be teaching my kid too. <laughs> so. Yes. Okay. Good. So now <laughs> let's move on to one that yeah, I'm sure we'll have a lot to mention too, but, um, yeah. Shall do, Lindsay, do you say shall? <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> say shall. Nope. <laughs> so we can just mark that one off. Yeah. No. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So there's an episode we did though, guys, episode 1866, we shall see how to express that the future is unknown. So I do use it in certain expressions like that, which if right. you go over to that episode, guys, you'll understand that, right? Right, right, right. So, but yeah, it's uh, talking about the future. Like, if you, I mean, you could technically say I shall be there by 12 or right. to suggest something. I think that this um, might be could could be used like oh shall i go there tomorrow to buy the dress or like if you're being kind of cute or like right. shall we shall we get going like we're going on a date or something like that right or maybe you know there's i have i told you about the show ghost that i like to watch which no. brings in all these people that died on this um <clears throat> in this mansion in all different eras of time so there's a guy from the revolutionary times like from the 1700s and he might say shall with his uh you know hands tucked behind his back we shall dine together this evening right <laughs> so that's just historically language was a little bit more formal Right. right, right. Okay, interesting. So it could be about the time. So guys, if you're, time. but in general, like I don't think shall is used very much, but guys, if you want to learn more, you can go to the three, uh, free dictionary.com and search these words and they have a lot of good information, but we wanted to, oh, wow. We have, wow, Michelle. Wow. <laughs> we, have a, we have a lot <laughs> still. Um, uh, Lindsay, how, how, how should well, we? Let, let, let's just go straight to the role play here. I, I think, think we, we should touched do on that. some interesting things already, Michelle, culturally about time, history, manners, kids, adults, all that good stuff. So in just a minute, we're going to go to the role play. Okay, Michelle, let's jump into that role play. Let's do it. So here I am new at the office and you are showing me around. You're my colleague. All right, here we go. Um, okay, so where do these files go? You must put them in that cabinet in the back. Oh, okay, got it. Thanks. May I drop them off there when I leave? Sure. Shall we take a break and get lunch? Yes. Any good places around here? I may try a new salad place down the street if you want to join. Oh, I'd love to. And you should try the sandwich shop next door. I've been and it's amazing. I love that place. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So some of these will really show us, you know, again, we'll highlight the ones that I think are kind of a little out of date, right, Michelle, that are maybe not as much, yes. you know, not likely to be used between you and me out in the world. Okay. Right. 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 So first I was asking about the files and you said you must put them in the cabinet in the back. Yeah. And again, we said in the beginning, we reserve that for certain situations. Not very common. It's just not very common. Right. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yep. And then you and then I said, uh, I, I may drop them off. Oh, may, sorry. No. May I drop them off there when I leave? But it probably would have felt more natural to say, can I? And yeah, exactly. I think that might be the takeaway from today. Instead of yeah. saying may, say can. <laughs> right, right. It's just it's the times. Language changes with the times. Unless you're a kid at the library and saying, you know, may I drop off my books, right? Because mm -hmm. your parent told you to say may. Okay. So that's kind of the truth here. Um, 
And then I say, sure, shall we take a break and get lunch? You know, now that I think about it though, I guess I do sometimes use shall in this in way. that kind of a way. That's what I was yeah. thinking too. It's kind of a cute like, oh, shall we do this, right? It's kind of fun. Like, shall we get started, right? Yeah. So I could see us saying that even in a team meeting, you know, we're chatting, shall we start, right? Shall we get yeah. started? Yeah. Sure, sure. Could be casual too. So maybe that one is coming back. Maybe it is. Um, and then you said, I may try a new salad place. Um okay. And then I said, well, you should try the salad, the sandwich shop next door. So a suggestion. Yeah, should, of course, super common. And that may, just to go back to that one, I said, I, you know, I may try a new salad plate. Here, Michelle, is this asking permission or is this saying you might do something? I might. It's a possibility. Right. And so in that way, it is pretty common, I think. Yeah. Yes. yes, I think so too. Okay. Awesome. All right, Michelle. Woo, you really went into her. this. It's funny, like the plan didn't look so so big, but then <laughs> it's funny in these grammar episodes how sometimes you think, oh, it's going to be, you know, grammar. But then Simple. sometimes there's a lot to talk about, there's like you say, culturally, um, Culture. time period, um, how things might sound. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so there's it, 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 this one ended up being quite dynamic. So we got a lot in there. This was a great question. Um, there's a lot more you could go into with this and we can continue in the future. But we gave you some, you know, some things to think about. Yeah, guys, for our listeners, if you've listened today and you want to hear more about any one of these words, you know, let us know. Email lindsay at allersenglish.com and tell us. Send us your question. We love getting your questions. We do. Good stuff, Michelle. As a takeaway, I think our listeners should just keep in mind language changes, right? right. So what you see in your textbook that was published in 19... 85, it might not be relevant. Right. <laughs> right? That's, true. That's a good point. Yeah. So good. Something so important. Yep, All right, guys. Lindsay. <laughs> yeah. Just want to remind our listeners, Michelle, hit follow on the podcast. And yes. Michelle, I'll see you in the next one. Take care. All right. Bye, guys. Bye.